So, Barry. Yes. What are we doing today? Uh, right, so we're going to move the piano from the middle of the room, because it's a nightmare, uh, to here, which is a conveniently open space. Yeah, great. Uh, what's the trials and tribulations of that? Uh, well, obviously, whenever you move a piano, um, you have to tune it again afterwards, most likely, and it's a little bit out of tune anyway, if we could play. I mean, it's not terrible, but you can definitely hear it. Definitely yeah, hear it definitely hear it. So we figured there's no point tuning it immediately, you may as well move it and then tune it. So, first problem is moving it, second problem is tuning it. <laughs> I would say the biggest problem is probably moving it. Yeah, so that would be easy. So uh, the, the piano's moved, obviously, you've just seen that. Now we're going to uh, tune some notes, so I'm going to hand over to Barry to show you how that is done. We've obviously just learned how to do this ourselves, I mean, we're not like pros or anything, but the way it's done is to tune the, uh, the middle C octave to a tuner or to a tuning fork. Uh, you can use like an iPhone app or something these days. And then tune the other strings to that. So the interesting thing with the piano is it's not necessarily making sure every note is dead on the frequency because that would be quite difficult to do. It's making sure it's dead on the string next to it, you know. And another interesting thing is that uh, piano strings have three, or a piano key in the treble register has three strings on it. Because I always thought stupidly it would just be a string per key, like yep, a guitar. Me too. But it isn't. So in a similar way to the fact that you tune one string, one key to the other, you actually tune one string to the other as well. So we'll do that. It's all relative, baby. Okay, so here it is. Give you a pass. Right, so that's the tuning fork, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Can you go through them all? Uh, no. <laughs> that's a screwdriver. <laughs> no, so um, largely it's the tuning fork and other bits like um, yeah, this, obviously. <laughs> You've got one of them there. No, and everything else is basically it, to enable you to mute the strings because yeah. the way you have three strings per key, you couldn't have you couldn't tune all three at once. You'd have to mute two and yeah. then tune one and then tune the other two for that one. So all stuff like this is so you can use a bunch of them at the same time, put it across like that. Or you can do them individually, which is what we tend to be doing, like wedging in a bit of rubber. So yeah, so anyway, we'll try that first. So this kit basically mm -hmm. is a catch-all for any kind yeah. of... Yeah. So that's great. So we'll try and find a, a link for one. Oh yeah, well it's below. from Amazon. Is it? Um, it's one of the more expensive ones, so it's only 40 quid. Uh, so great. it's quite good. Because um, yeah. you can get, get much, much cheaper ones. Apparently, the thing that you need to look for, I mean, that's obviously the main tool, yeah. is the fit of that on the tuning peg. Oh, that is the most yeah. important one, isn't because it? Because yeah. if you have any sort of like movement, if you have too much movement, it's so m micro adjustments. Yeah. Um, it wouldn't really work, so if that's really, really loose, it's kind of pointless, I've heard. Yeah. So we've stopped, so hell with it, we'll get a really good one. Yeah, I can imagine doing that free-handed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right then, so, what I'm going to do is pick, um... Say that one? Yeah. yeah. So like that's where the uh, F4, is it, or something? So, well, tune that to the chromatic tuner, because it's just easier. Okay, so step one is to... We want to concentrate on the first string, tune the first string or wire to the chromatic tuner and then tune the second string to the first string and the third string to the first and second string, yeah. do you know what I mean? So, do you want to point out where, what string that relates to? Uh, so that's this one, so that's three, these three pegs. Uh, one thing that I found myself constantly doing is getting the, the previous note perfect, then moving to the next note and tuning the wrong peg. Yeah, <laughs> like on that happens. <laughs> Okay, I picked a really difficult one to do. You find the more space that you have, um, like there for example, you need to get loads and loads of mutes in, but then when you get up to like this treble bridge here, then it's, uh, it's a lot more difficult. So you can see basically what we've done there is stopped string two and three from playing. So when we tune that, we know we're just tuning, uh, tuning the first one. So, okay, great. I've got like a free tuning app on the phone. I mentioned there's probably loads of possibles. Yeah, I'll put a link to that yeah. as well. I don't think this really matters this bit as long as it's like decent. Oh yeah, you turn it on. Wish up people your phone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we like... can see it's quite flat. Yeah. And another thing to remember, I guess, is um, you, well, I, I certainly personally never get it 100% perfect. It seems impossible to get it perfect. Yeah. It'll be wavering between, you know, half a semitone or something. Uh, flat and then sharp, so it's a case of making sure it's as close as you, you can possibly yeah. get it really. This idea that, oh it's going to be dead on, 
for me at least because I'm rubbish at this. <laughs> it's not possible. Right, so it's always the pegs to the right. So sorry, I don't want to hit the camera here, but yeah. Just want to give people yeah, absolutely. both views, yeah. So if we go um, clockwise, it goes sharp. If we go anti-clockwise, it's flat. So. Oh, have I done the wrong peg? <laughs> have, <laughs> have, you? have you? Damn it. Yeah. It's an easy right. mistake to make. Yeah, so I just did that deliberately to show how easy, <laughs> how easy it can be. What a good test. There you can see. It's a difficult one to tune. I'm gonna need to beat this more. See. Okay, so we'll just get one of the other tools out basically. All these are just different shape things for trying to get the best way you can. So we'll do something like that as well. I'm sure everyone has their own little methods and stuff, but just whatever way you can mute the other yeah. two strings. Just to isolate that one string. Is this one? Very well, it? It's not picking up properly. Can't be right. It's actually quite close, that isn't it? Yeah. That sounds dead on to me. Yeah, but if you look at the actual, do you know on the tuner? Yeah. I think one really important thing about piano tuning, from what I've learned, is it's less about the statistic on the screen and more about the way it sounds. You yeah. know what I mean? I forget about this green line, by the way. Oh, yeah. It doesn't mean anything. It's a falsy phone. Bring up the phone. <laughs> well, you can, you, can, you can plainly see it. <laughs> okay, so that's, um, we're going to say that's string one of F4, tuned, yep. whatever it is. Two um, more to go. So now we're going to yeah, um, mute string number three yep. and tune string number two to number one. And it's all about, I think they call it warbling. So it's when the frequencies are slightly different. It has this kind of like phasey effect. And we've done it obviously loads of times with me and you know when it's right. It's always like, is that right? Is that right? And then bam. You'll hit, sudden. you'll nail it. Yeah, yeah, so basically you want to make the two strings sound like one string. If it yeah. sounds like there are two strings playing, it's not properly tuned. So, but, yeah. Okay, so I've taken this out. I don't know if you can see that properly. So that's just string number three. Mm -hmm. Is that muted now? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go down a peg. <laughs> Take you down a peg. <laughs> uh. Pretty much it, really, isn't it? Mm. A bit up. A bit out. <laughs> yeah, so. Oh, there you that. go. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Okay. So we do the same with the third string now. I find one good way to um, do it is to actually deliberately knock it out too, so you can see what the difference is. Yeah. That's it. I was gonna say, maybe not dead on, but. Oh, I had it then and then it went. It, it's this though, this is how difficult yeah. it is, really. Yeah, the slightest nudge will take it out. I mean, you can see how much I'm moving because that's just like yeah. free anyway. It so. actually looks like you're holding a hot dog <laughs> from this angle. Oh, oh there, there we go. go. Mad, isn't it? Nailed like, it. You can convince yeah. yourself that is right when it yeah. isn't. And then all of a sudden go, oh no, yeah. no it's right. And yeah, you realise every other key is yeah. out of tune now apart from that one. <laughs> piano with Barry. With Barry. Yeah, so you just have to do that, what, um, 67 times? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I know, yeah, so. Well, more than that, isn't it? You're a lot well, more. 60, that process, 67 times. Yeah. But really, it's like 226 times. <laughs> yeah, but you just end up doing it now and again. Yeah. So the, what, the ones you, you kind of need. Yeah, you can do that full tune thing, or yeah. you can do what's called spot tuning. And, yeah. and that's what we do really, isn't it? Every now and again, oh, tune that up, I'm going to go. Spot tuning, I like it. So we'll, uh, we'll do the whole thing at some point. But, but not now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks guys, and we'll see you next time for a dose of spot tuning with Barry. That's always plays you out with that. That's his last thing. I'm supposed to be walking away. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs>